so what's going on YouTube just doing a little wrench video here for you it's not gonna be real long uh, I'm gonna be doing uh, the measurement of the stock Marlin skid plate for you on the Marlin and oops bumped the chair sorry and uh, then we will install the Bauhaus skid plate here and uh, we will do the same measurement to see what ground clearance we've cl we've clear we've managed to get in the center. Had to get some coffee in me before I started. Hope everybody's doing well. I appreciate the ones that are liking and subscribing, and uh, always drop a comment in my videos. Uh, channel's still growing, so I got some more trail stuff coming for you guys, and some more parts comparison between. An RC four-wheel drive wrap, uh, anti wrap bar, and the A and M wrap bar. That's going to be another video I'm going to try to get on this week, uh, because I see people being really stupid in some groups saying just dumb crap when they don't. You know, it's the stuff they say about the RC four-wheel drive wrap bar, uh, anti wrap bar. Yeah, I don't know. They just they have no experience with it. Why would you comment? But that's Facebook for you, especially in RC groups. But uh, Let's get on with this. How we're going to measure this, guys, is uh, we got a mic, okay, and then my digital caliber, micro, whatever, and then we are using this for an adjustable measuring device to go under the skid. I have this set already for the Marlin factory skid, and what we this is sitting. About as level as what we can get it here. Let me move it, let me move it forward a little bit. It's sitting level. This is a flat piece of plywood. So I have this to where it will just slide underneath the Marlin skid. Okay? And that's when it where it touches. Where I have it at right there is where this touches. It just has a little bit of drag on it. Where it just barely touches the skid. So what we're going to do is, I've already zeroed out, or we're going to zero out our mic here, because you can see our uh, digital caliper. So we're just going to zero it out, and it's going to be in millimeters. So we're going to measure this to give us our uh, measurement. I already know where it's going to be at, because I did this a little bit ago. Stupid little spiders down here. Um, so I can pretty much set it where it needs to be. Um, so this is where it just touches the factory Marlin skid. And the Marlin skid, skid plate gives you more clearance um, than the actual regular Trail Finder 2 skid. So right there we go. It is 58.8 .8 millimeters of clearance. So what you get with the factory is 58.8 .8 millimeters of clearance here. Not clearance, of clearance um, with the factory Marlin skid plate, okay? That's what you get right there. Um, there we go, sliding back under. So what we're going to do is we're going to install the Bauhaus, and I'm not going to record that. It's pretty straightforward, guys. You know, the Marlin one does bolt in from the bottom. Uh, so you got one, two, three, four. Uh, it's a Delrin skid. Works perfectly fine. Uh, you pull your drive shafts out. Uh, unscrew your transfer case. You got two screws. Uh, some people have trouble with this because of Loctite stuff. And then just pull your four screws out of here and then everything just comes out and then you have your transfer case shaft here but you can just take it loose up here and pull the whole thing out in one piece it doesn't matter it's really straightforward so now when they're putting the Bauhaus one back in it goes in different uh, unfortunately it goes in the side so yeah you know I, I wish they he would have came up with or you know kept the bottom screw in it just makes it easier to access to get to to work on. So we're going to end this here. I'm going to get to taking this apart and get this Bauhaus skid installed just because I'm super curious uh, of how much clearance it's going to do, going to give us. 
And then I am going to take these wheels and tires and put them on the Forerunner with no body on it. Uh, so they'll have they 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 weigh about the same that way, and we will measure the clearance that you get with the same tires and wheels. The leaf springs might are a little more broken on the Forerunner, but I can't imagine that giving it a huge difference. And that way, you guys can see the A and M skid. Um, you know what you get in millimeters on the A and M skid. So factory is fifty eight point eight. So we'll be right back. Okay, guys, we're back. We have the Bauhaus skid plate installed. This is what it looks like underneath. Didn't take me hardly any time at all. Uh, I had to source some new screws, and I'll go over with you. Just go ahead and go over with you. I reused the two screws that came out of the original, uh, you know, transfer case mount. So I used those two. Uh, I had to source, uh, one of the screws goes in from the inside, which I don't like, but it's not that big of a deal. It goes in from the inside here to your body mount. So the screws that come out of it are coarse thread, um, screws and they're a little, sh they're, they come up a little short, so you'll have to get a longer screw there and a longer screw for that side for your body mount post unless you're using some kind of other mount system i don't know i don't have a use for that because the stock mounting stuff works fine for me um i'm not one of those guys that complain about that so uh we got that everything lined up perfect um transfer case dropped right in it uh, everything's nice and smooth you will have to get longer screws for, for the inside of here as well. Uh, I had to have, you have to use lock nuts uh, because this isn't threaded or the Marlin's not. So I had just, you know, two, two black lock nuts. You won't even tell they're there. And a little longer screw to come in here from the outside of your frame. You could go in either way. I just come in from the outside of the frame on the lock nut and a lock nut on it. Uh, and then that's it. And then you can drop your transfer case back in and voila. The only thing that I did not like about this one, uh, getting to your grub screws isn't a big deal on the, in the, on the front. It's all open. But getting to your grub screws here in the back one is going to be kind of a pain in the butt. You have to spin your drive shafts and come in from the side. Uh, to get to your grub screws here, which, you know, no big deal. Um, I get, you know, just, you can get right into it here from the side. It's just, this one you had plenty of room because the nubs aren't very wide on the, on your stock Delrin Marlin one. So you can get right to your grub screws and just, you know, tighten them down. This just made it a little bit harder to get to your grub screws. No big deal. So, the moment everybody's waiting on here. We're going to grab our um, measuring device here, and we're going to go ahead and set it at our 58.8, zeroed out our digital caliper. We're going to set it at our 58.8, get to it here for our ground clearance and make sure we got this set. Uh, okay, we're at our 58.8 on our height on our measuring piece here. So we're just going to slide it under. And no draggy draggy. It looks like there's probably... Oh yeah, there's a good bit of difference there um, between the two of them. Let me, let me pull this up. I think it'll go, it won't go up any higher. Okay, so the jack stand will not go up any higher. Um, I didn't anticipate that, but you get the camera down here. It looks like you have... We'll get the camera down to the angle where you guys can see it here. Okay, and I'll try to zoom in the best I can. It might be kind of wobbly here. I've got the chair sitting. Maybe you can see that. 
So you got a couple, I don't know, it might even be three more millimeters of clearance. It, it might not look like it there for you guys um, on that. But for the cost of the skid plate, um, it's beveled. So it will not catch or dig as bad. So it will glance off of stuff um, a lot easier. I would say that's a pretty good improvement because sometimes with two to four millimeters on stuff, can really make a difference but i hope hopefully you guys can make that out there's a good bit there um so i'm guessing probably another three mil clearance over the marlin uh, is what you're gonna get May maybe a little bit more i don't know i wish i well let me see if i can find a way of measuring this here okay guys so what i came up with here i've made some shims here these are some like giant popsicle sticks i use for building different stuff um together these are three and a half millimeters stacked together. Um, right there's the measurement on the digital caliper. They are three and a half mil, three and a half mil on the digital caliper. So we are going to slide our jack stand on top our plus three and a half mil and see if we got clearance here on the little jack stand which is already at 58.8 millimeters so we're gonna see it just barely touches it there but you can just kind of move it you can kind of just move this in and out on it it catches on it a little bit but you can see so we're gonna say you know, basically, if I hold this, I can just slide it in and out. Um, so, you're going to glide over any of that stuff um, at that. So, you might as well figure you're going to get right at three and a half more millimeters of clearance out of the skid plate. Um, so, you're looking at, so, 50, we'll say 58 point eight so then you got 58 59 60 61 62 so you're you're looking at quite a bit more clearance really um almost almost a four millimeter or a four millimeter whatever clearance upgrade that's that's well worth what the skid plate cost in my opinion especially if you're one of those guys i mean i do go on the rock stuff sometimes uh anybody that watches my videos you'll see especially in the creek stuff um so that's what you're going to get out of this, guys. Uh, I just wanted to do this kind of quickly. This is the easiest way I could think of to come up to prove to you guys the difference. Um, this is going to glance off things, whereas this is going to dig in. This is the stock Marlin. Uh, I, I don't know what the, the Marlin skid plate gives you over your, you know, Trail Finder 2, maybe a couple mil. I don't know. But, you know, four or whatever millimeter upgrade, uh, that's, that's, a good, that's a good amount. Uh, well worth the 20 bucks or whatever. Uh, I can't remember what I paid for the Bauhaus now, but I think you can get them on sale too in different places, different prices. So, and it's, you know, still a nice scale uh, looking skid here. You know what I mean? The, the Marlin has a Delrin one anyway, so this isn't going to be any less as strong really. Uh, I like I said, this is beveled, so it's gonna glance off of things. Uh, yeah, I'd highly recommend that Bauhaus one, guys. I'm gonna pick another Bauhaus up for my uh, yellow Forerunner uh, because uh, I wanted a little more center clearance on that on that Forerunner as well. So I think that's we're gonna call it from the RC Dungeon, guys. That's all we got for the day. Uh, hopefully, get this video posted up this week. I've got some more trail footage that I'm posting first, and. Uh, then I'm going to start doing some stuff with the anti-wraps and going over a comparison between the anti-wrap bars. But uh, I will try to loop in here at the end of this video putting these wheels and tires on the Red 4Runner and then without a body on it either and trying to measure the millimeters of clearance you get because they're going to be roughly the same ride height anyways. Uh, on both these trucks with the same size tire and wheel so i'll measure that with for so we can get the measurements for the um a and m garage skid too so you guys will have a comparison between 
A&M Garage, and you'll have the stock Marlin, which is already like a factory upgrade from RC four-wheel drive, and you'll have the Bauhaus. Uh, Boom Racing used to make one that was probably the best uh, because I'm, it was aluminum, and it had really good high clearance and everything. Uh and it was, you know, it was more designed, I think, closer to this one. Actually, the boom one kind of looked like the one on the Trail Finder 3. So, we may even do a Trail Finder 3 ground clearance center skid. Which I can already tell you, the TF3 has way more ground clearance on the center skid. Even over any of these. So, um, it's actually quite a bit of difference. So, I'm going to have to invest in more of the Bauhaus skids, guys. So, anyways, from the RC Dungeon, I hope everybody likes the video. Give me a like, subscribe. Hit me up, questions down below, comment. Uh, come on, guys, help me out here with the channel. Peace. Okay, guys, and we're back. So, like I said, I grabbed my TF2 uh, that has the AM. This isn't the comp skid, this is just the regular AM skid plate um, that you can buy from him. This is the one that we cut and trimmed to make room. Uh, for the anti wrap bar so it could glide easily um, back and forth so it could move here and not get stuck on anything um, so <clears throat> with that being said we're going to go ahead and do our um, test here this is our 58.8 millimeter I do believe is what the measurement was on this clearance you guys can see nowhere near hitting on the A&M skid plate here so I ended up, the Bauhaus gets away with two of these as a shim, which is basically 3.5 millimeter. So we're going to set two of these down first and set our right here. And you guys can see me slide this under here. As you can see, still got pretty good clearance a little bit there. Um press down on these so we know that they're sitting flat i don't know if you guys can see that or not there but um it's got good clearance still so we're gonna add a third one here we go we'll add a third one here to the pile and i will press these down so they're sitting completely flat whenever i slide them under here put our jack stand on here make sure we're all the way up because all the way up on it is our 58.8 measurement so I'm going to slide them under. Right there is where it starts kind of hitting, guys. That's about the end of your clearance. Um, it's, it's three of them together. It just it kind of it kind of just almost rubs right there. So we'll try a fourth one and see what it does. Um, because if it clears the, thir the fourth one, then basically you're looking at the A&M having uh, 3.5 millimeters more clearance uh than than the Bauhaus one which that is quite a bit like if you're gonna comp or whatever or you're seriously trailing but I don't think the fourth one will clear here no the fourth one does hit the edge of the skid plate there so uh you're not gonna uh get it to go under there so so we have basically, let me pick the three here. Um, we got one, two, and see what we got on the clearance again of the three. So we're going to say, try it again here with the three. And you can see, I don't know if the camera can pick it up. It's almost, it's basically, you know, almost touching right there um even pushing down on them holding them tight together um it's just barely clearing right there about where i was at with the Bauhaus skid so we're gonna call that a close you know well pretty much what you're gonna be for clearance so it looks like the Bauhaus skid or i mean the a and m skid duh is going to give you uh, let me see here. Get our digital caliper out. I've already zeroed it. So, the Bauhaus did two of those shims. 
together. So we're going to do, and I've mic'd the shims. They are all the same size. Uh, so you can see here, one shim. That's uh, that's that's what we what we got right there. One shim is two millimeters. So this bow house will give you two more mil. A oh, bow house. I keep calling the A and M skid will give you two millimeters more clearance than the bow house skid will. Um, so you can take that as however you want. Um, that's the thickness of the clearance extra you're gonna get running the A&M garage over the Bauhaus uh, center skid. Now, like I said before in the beginning of the video, you know, even when it comes to this scale RC stuff, you know, it doesn't take... Two millimeters can be a big difference, believe it or not. So, especially if you're in the comp world and, and stuff of that nature. Uh, if you're scaling it, scale trailing... Um, you know, two millimeters isn't a big deal, uh, but here's another thing that I've noticed, I've learned, and I know a lot of people probably aren't going to like it, but I have noticed that a lot of your metal, when you're, especially if you're on the rock, or if you're on, um, like, logs, wood stuff, anything that has a grippy texture, the metal sliders, some of the metal sliders that I have used just don't slide as well as the plastic. Uh, these plastic ones seem to just slide better to me personally. Um, so I'm guessing it would equate into the same thing as the maybe that Delrin... And that, that, what that, that skid plate, that bow house is made out of, I don't know. It's not like regular 3D printed stuff, uh, but it's real slick, like it's not like real grippy, it's real slick. So I don't know if that would maybe give you a little bit of advantage with, you know, sliding. I, I mean, I haven't had any trouble with the A&M, uh, one like this right here, uh, but you know, you can see gouges and stuff where stuff has been digging up into it. Uh, of course, I've been running this truck pretty hard, especially in rocks and stuff. So, And the good advantage of this, too, is this A&M does give you a good weight um, down low. It gives you some extra center weight mass down here because these skids are they're stupid heavy. Um, so it does give you good center mass down low weight. Uh, so that is a nice... So you can't go wrong with either one of them, really. Um I can't really say any negative things about either one of them. I got to get the Bauhaus on out on my Marlin and get it, uh, you know. And by the way, I did put the same tires and wheels on, if you noticed. Uh, that way, this was a fair shake at both the skid plates. So, you're looking at about a two millimeter difference, guys. Um, so, really, that's not a huge, a huge thing. You know, I can pull up here on the digital caliper. We zeroed it out again. And I'll pull you up a two mil. Um, that's a two mil on our gap. That's what you get between the two skids. Now, I don't even know the price difference between them or anything like that because I've just picked up several different used trail finder trucks that had, you know, I, this is the only one I kept the A&M on because this is more one of my beater trucks. And it was my test mule for trying different shocks and figuring out what length shocks work the best and what shock towers work really well for the most affordable price uh, without blowing out the big money for like the Glendale or however you say it, the, the shocks. Because uh, I get just as much out of these cheap $10, $12 shock hoops that extend um, as I do upgrading to the more expensive ones from RC Full Wheel Drive. So, I can't really say anything, you know, any different about any of that stuff. But, uh, this was the test truck that I've been using for everything. And to see how well the front and rears were going to hold, uh, you know. And it's been pretty impressive to me. Uh, this truck gets beat super hard. Uh, I'm really, I'm kind of rough on this thing on purpose because everybody complains 
about the Yoda diffs and all that jazz and stuff, and I haven't had that problem yet. Everybody complains about the screw hardwares being junk. Uh, I've had one screw mess up on me, not in this truck. It was a different one. It was partially my fault because I had the tool at an angle, and I knew I was probably going to strip it, so that was really my fault. Uh, this has been the one, and I made sure this thing, you know, the hardware was good and rusted before I tried to take any of it out. You can see it's get some, got some rust on it now. I use this truck. It's in the water. Um, you know, I've had one bearing, bearing failure in the front, and it was, and then that's what broke the dog bone axle. And I'm really hard on this truck, guys. You guys can watch the videos. It gets used. Um, I am going to get my wheels and tires off of here and get them on my, back on my Marlin. Cause I'm going to start getting the Marlin out and getting it running. So, uh, the leaf springs are a little, they're not really bent. Okay. So we're just going to go ahead and wrap this up guys. Uh, stupid camera shut off on me again. So we're going to get this wrapped up. There's your two, there's your skid plates, uh, stock and well stock Marlin, uh, and Bauhaus and A&M, uh, I, you can't go wrong with the Bauhaus or the A&M one. If you want the extra weight, like I said, down low, guys, you're not really going to beat the A&M stuff. Uh, for, and it, is, it would be nice having the A&M stuff, but you're looking at two millimeters more clearance. So if you're looking to get the most, I would say the A&M. If you're looking for a great scaler, um, like, and I mean, it is, it is, you know, because this hunk of metal down here doesn't look real scale. Um... You know, if you want more of a scale stockisher appearance, I'll grab it real quick before we conclude the video. Uh, let me get the uh, Marlin. There it is. So that's more of a scale or stalker look, uh, in my opinion. Uh, then, you know, and it keeps the bottom of the truck open more. You can see a little better. You don't got to bolt any other plates up into here. Because, uh, you know, with the A&M comes with the extra plate up here and support plate or whatever that is right there. So you, you do kind of lose, you know, it does kind of take up in there. So, uh, I mean, myself, I'm going to stick with the Bauhaus stuff um, just because it gives it more of a scalar look, I, I, I personally feel. Um, that's just me, though. But anyways, you guys seen it here on the RC Dungeon. Next will be video will be anti wrap comparisons. I've got the AM on the Marlin, and I've got the RC four wheel drive ones on all my other trucks. And uh, we're going to be doing a little video series on that stuff, and I'll show you guys because I've seen some stupid stuff in some Facebook groups. Uh, people saying stuff about the RC four wheel drive bar static, and it's not, it's a movable bar. Uh, I just see people comment like ridiculous stuff. You know, when somebody asks a question, of course, a few of them groups, that's just normal for them. That's how those guys roll. That's why I stay away from Facebook mostly anymore. Uh, because, you know, I don't comment on something if I don't know about it. And if I comment on something, it's because I've had experience with it and used it. And, uh, you know, a lot of that crap you get on them Facebook groups is just somebody's personal opinion or somebody being, uh, for the lack of better words, sometimes mostly being an asshat. Uh, that's just how those, most of those guys are. I've noticed the RC four-wheel drive groups. I'm not pointing a finger out anything in, in particular, but uh, one of them in particular is way worse than the other ones, and I don't even post on that stuff much anymore. Um, they're like little children on there sometimes. But uh, anyways, you've seen it here, guys. I'm sure I'll get some hateful comments down below. <laughs> If anybody on them groups watch this stuff, but you do, it's it's ridiculous. I'm sorry it is uh, on some of those groups. But anyways, from the RC Dungeon, as always, guys, you got to help grow the hobby. I just wanted to share this information so you can see the information in real time. Uh, it is what it is. You do get a little bit more out of the A&M, but if you want more scale look, I'd highly recommend the Bauhaus because two millimeters isn't going to make it and break it that bad. And the Bauhaus has a really good design that'll slide over obstacles real well. I'm going to go out and do some real-world testing here in a minute. It's about 100 degrees out here. But I'm going to throw a battery in the Marlin and go out and do some testing on a rock uh, area that I couldn't get over a few rocks because of the belly clearance with the stock Marlin skid. 
And uh, I'm gonna see if I can get over that uh, now at this point in time with the Bauhaus. If that if that if that works for me, then I'm gonna be. Yeah, this Marlin doesn't need anything else. It's set up. It's perfect. I don't need to change anything else on it. The truck will, will have at that point performed way past my expectations. So, anyhow, guys, from the RC Dungeon, as always, drop a like, comment down below, or I guess not like, whatever, from the RC Dungeon. Peace.